So Battlefield 2042 has recently announced its portal mode and with it we're getting a bunch of fan favourite maps. But more interestingly, I thought, what do the fan least favourite maps look like? And I know Silk Road is loved by many, but if you've ever played it on Rush, you know it's got problems. So we're flying it here in the A-10 Warthog with the Hydra rockets, and this map is literally every attack jet pilot's absolute paradise. So just starting off right here, you can just take a look at the map. The map is bare. There's not much on it. There's not much cover. It's literally a desert and it has a jet on it. Like what were Dice thinking firstly? I actually can't believe it. And then we can just go look at counters. So the attack jet, in my opinion, very, very easy vehicle to counter, right? You guys might think, oh, Silk, you drop 100 no gameplays in the attack jet. Yeah, but it, it is really, really easy to counter. All you need is a stealth jet. First thing, if you get in a stealth jet, you're slightly good at dogfighting. You're gonna beat any attack jet pilot. There's just not much they can do. They just turn very, very slowly. Or you can have an AA. The AA is a little bit harder to counter the jet with, but you'll basically have to move around a lot and the jet can't hit a JDAM on you. Uh, between strafes, you can repair the AA and unspot it. And those kind of plays are just gonna make it extremely hard for the jet to kill you. But on Silk Road, the map has neither of those things. Uh, basically in Battlefield 3, this is where it started really, we had the rush jets, which are basically the attack jets from Battlefield 4. So the only way you could fly the A-10 in Battlefield 3 was playing rush, and they carried this over to Battlefield 4, which I really like, because I honestly don't like the, the rock, paper, scissors mechanics with stealth versus attack, so on this game mode, you don't have to deal with a stealth jet at all. There's no stealth jets on it, it's just attack jets, and the better dogfighter is always going to win that fight. Now, you don't actually have an AA on most of these maps either, and that's where they really went wrong here. Uh, this map definitely, definitely here. needs an AA. I'm not sure what they were thinking, but as we'll find out, these maps aren't even balanced from the infantry and kind of map design perspective. The attackers or defenders will often have a massive advantage depending on the map. And I just don't know how this game mode is so highly rated in Battlefield. Um, we're just playing it right now in the A-10. We're pretty much just chilling at the skybox, waiting for our flares to come back gonna take down two to three infantry on the minimum you know and this game mode is still rated as the go-to game of so many battlefield players you see all the battlefield veterans raving on about rush it's not that good in battlefield 4 and i know it's coming back in 2042 but i really really hope they get it right because in this game i haven't seen any evidence that rush is a good game mode at all i've been trying to play it here and there all the time i'm just hopping on rush servers and it's never been balanced there's always just vehicle imbalance or you know, the map just has really, really unfair natural positioning for either team. It's it's really rough. I haven't seen a good implementation of Rush in this game yet. I'm sure there's a few good maps for it, but you guys really did like that Rush video I made before, the Rush World Records video. So we're hopping back in the jet today and we're going to try to at least commentate over what we're trying to do here. We're going to play both rounds, the A-10 and then the Fan-10 on defense. And hopefully we can get some good rounds going. Just because the game mode is unbalanced doesn't mean we can't have a good time on it. And I'm having a great time with this chat. I mean, I'm trying a new loadout here. I'm actually using the... So the 30 mils, obviously, everyone has to use them. But the Hydra Rockets this time instead of the JDAMs. And then the Flares instead of the ECM. And then the Stealth Coating instead of the Belt Feeder. So every aspect of this loadout is different to what I usually use. And I've kind of tailor-made this loadout for the absolute maximum farm. The Flares are really good, actually, because... They let you have confidence in a strafe. You know that they're going to work pretty much every single time. And the stealth coding almost plays into that hand where you have a longer lock time. So you can at least have a better time to react with the flares. 
you can kind of watch the missile coming in and flare at the right time, the perfect time. It makes it really, really easy to deal with locks running the stealth coating and the flares. Now the Hydra Rockets, they aren't really better than the JDAMs in my opinion. I think the JDAMs are the, the most meta loadout for the attack jet, just because you can pretty much insta-kill any armor piece, which is really, really powerful. And you don't have to point your jet directly at the fight to actually do damage, which is really, really good. Because firstly, you can trick enemies. They're not going to expect you sometimes if they don't see that you're pointing at them. But you also don't have to really commit yourself too much. By strafing with the Hydras, you're slowing down, you're going straight. You can be a really easy kill sometimes, but with the JDAMs, you can pretty much just snipe with them. Anyways, coming back into this gameplay, it actually pays to fly realistically. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, you don't fly jets realistically, you know, Milson more, fly in first person, play hardcore. You know, all these things I'd usually dismiss, but in terms of Silk Road Rush, I'm pretty much flying the A-10 as realistically as I've ever flown it, to be honest. Uh, I don't really come in on a low angle or pop over mountains like they usually do in real life, but I am exiting low. I'm not really going slow like real life, but I'm using the flares as well, so we're kind of borrowing the most real life kind of aspect of the A-10 in this game right here. Usually I'm doing the total opposite things and flying it like an absolute hoon, but in the case of this map, it actually works really well when you just have lock-ons going for you. Anyways, locking back in on this game, we've got 26 tickets left to take this NCOM right here, and it's looking grim. I know I have to pop these tanks, killed one tank, and the other tank is already dead, so... Next, we have to get the jet, really. The jet is the next threat here. Hopefully, we can get it down, because we need our tanks to push up. I've got my mates in tanks as well, so this is a pretty stacked team we have. Uh, we have a pretty good lineup for our vehicles here. And do get the jet there, but... Really unfortunate that it goes through my flares. There's not much you can do against that. It will just go through your flares and insta kill you sometimes. It's just unfortunate. Anyways, the game is looking pretty grim. We're gonna have to spawn in this infantry here if we want any chance of winning. Hop in the tank because he hasn't got a gunner. A lot of locks here. May as well give him some reps here. And this game is looking rough. Um. I can't wait to try the defender side because if we can't push this team we have right now, I don't know how how they're going to push against us because I will play both sides of the map. Get a few kills there though. Help out reworks and let's push towards this MCOM, see if we can cap it. And smoke grenades are so underrated by the way. Let's get in here though. Definitely some guys on the MCOM. Ooh. we got six tickets left, I have to just make a play here, honestly. There's nothing I can do. Come on. Alright, we got arms. Um, so that's, that's, that's a good start. It's a very good start. I'm just going to play around the smoke. I got the P90 out. P90 again, underrated weapon. You get it from the campaign, by the way, if anyone's going to ask about it. This thing is so good, though. My favorite engineer weapon right now. You can just hip fire it, which is the good thing about it. You save a lot of time ADSing when you just spraying straight from the hip. And I'm gonna play in this little spot here. I think I have two kills there. That's the MCOM destroyed. A bit of a clutch play. Gonna redeploy for the jet. And hopefully, hopefully we can keep this game alive. <laughs> Alright, so that last sector was way too close. So we're gonna get right in by killing these tanks. Tanks are really strong on this map. Just open fields, HMG, you'll easily just tap those heads. So in this case, we're gonna try to kill both tanks straight away. I can't let them have another chance like that. They almost won the game there, so... It was going a bit easy on them. No more. We're gonna... We're gonna crack down on this enemy team here. Getting a lock, so I'm gonna fly straight back towards this tank here. And flare as late as possible, because I know it's gonna work. And let it have as much cover on me as possible. And then dip down below this little hill here. A little bit of a nice play, just getting the most out of that little flare duration. And now my flares are pretty much up again, so... That's the big advantage of flares there, guys. You can you can just flare and then come back in. Pick up two infantry there. Expecting to get locked here. But I'm not, actually, so... I guess if you don't get locked in this kind of situation, turn straight back towards them. Make the most of that little bit of time where you're not going to get locked because they can still lock you on your way out. So make sure you're at least heading back in by the time you do get locked so you can strafe, flare, fly away. And it seems like this kind of little diagonal section I'm flying through is a really good farming kind of route for this map. I only got one there just because of some average Hydra aim, but 
I'm not a Hydra main, guys. I usually use the Jade Ams. Just on maps like this, you just you can't turn it down. The Hydras are way too good. And yeah, just getting into the strafe here. I may as well just say, if you guys do enjoy the content, please do leave it with a like. It would help me with the algorithm a lot. YouTube has kind of hated me lately, but it also did love me for the past month or so. So I'm not really sweating it, but... Again, if you guys enjoy the content, like, maybe subscribe, you know. We're getting into Battlefield 4 for a little bit here, but as soon as 2042 comes out, it's, it's green light, man. It's fucking green light. Cannot wait for that game. It's going to be great. And I guess just another thing, if there's anything you guys want to see on the channel, definitely let me know. I mean, eight years into Battlefield 4, a lot of stuff has been done, and I don't really know what you guys want to see these days. I have brought in a lot of people who are different from my original audience, they're pretty much just jet nerds. Now we have jet nerds, heli nerds, just Battlefield players in general, and it's absolutely great, but I just want to know what you guys want to see, because I can really provide the content, I just need to know what you guys want. Anyways, unfortunately there, we're going to die again, this time to an Igla going through our flares. Some unlucky deaths for sure, but... It is just how it goes on Silk Road. The enemies get really desperate. All right, so back in the next jet. Somehow, our friendly team, the friendlies are doing something here. They actually capped the sector without my help, which is really good to see. Quite promising, but I will not take my foot off the pedal yet because this map is really, really hard to push. And straight away, we're just gonna go to the high ground and try to kill as many as we can. Against tanks and infantry, but mainly tanks actually. High ground is really, really strong because the tank shell pretty much does nothing against it. You have no splash damage, you have to use the cannons only. And unless they're running canister shells, they're not going to be able to insta-kill people off high ground, so... They can really become a bit of a menace from that kind of position. And looking at the map, I see a lot of infantry out on that little plateau area. I'm going to wait for my uh, flares to come back and we're going to give it a go. And it's just so many, it's hard to know who to shoot. This map is very much like that. There's always just more and more infantry to shoot at. And I'm going to try to use these little hills and my speed to get away here. But even then, you're just getting locks on you all the time and it is nerve-wracking to fly. It's very, very nerve-wracking because any of those locks could be a PLD javelin and you're dead. That's all it takes. One rocket from the wrong kind of launcher and you die in the jet. It's pretty risky. Now, we're going to go back, try to kill the guy off the high ground straight away and look for another kill here. Do see one down there. I'm surprised that didn't kill. I'm gonna try to flare late to make sure the PLD doesn't hit and still hit somehow. It still hits. As soon as you flare, you kind of already know if it's gonna hit or not, and I already knew it was gonna kill me there. This is what it is. Alright, so we've made some adjustments to the loadout here. Definitely had to make some adjustments. The flares were not working at all. So we've changed to the ECM. Same loadout otherwise though. I'm gonna see if it works. Straight away, just gonna try and hit the objectives because my teammates are getting closer now. It's actually gonna help to kill some people on the objectives. Gonna get a few there. An AA mine unfortunately takes my ECM away. Really, really annoying when that happens. You're about to escape and then the AA mine just, you know, clips you. Anyway, it's gonna use that opportunity to get a lot of altitude. Altitude is really nice in the jet. You just have so much time to spot anyone you want. And that spotting beacon, oh sorry, spawn beacon, really annoying. Pretty much just stop me from seeing anyone there. Still do get two kills, I'm gonna use the mounds in here just to dodge it. And even using this cover as best as I can, it still is just nerve-wracking as I said before. I've always got locks on me, I'm always hearing beeps on this map, just because it's all infantry and a few tanks in the enemy team, so... They're gonna try to count me of course, it makes a lot of sense. But the ECM, it's working well. ECM is doing a really good job here, and I'm quite happy I switched. Just passing that 50 ticket mark as well. It's looking like it's getting closer to the crunch time when my team just has to start working on an MCOM. we got to start getting at least one of them here. You want, probably want one by now, honestly. Now that jet has just absolutely caught the beam there, and we really have to just start cracking on them objectively here. It's getting into the crunch time of the game, and... I'm trying to kill people off the high ground, the main groups of people, and of course the jet has to die every time. Pretty much always got to keep that jet down because it could crunch our tanks, and our tanks are in good positioning here, by the looks of it. We got one behind them and one in front of them. It's a little bit of like a pins to action we got going on there. Just to help them out though, we really got to get the guys off the high ground, and this is the absolute kind of clutch period of the game where we just got to go hard. We got to go really hard if we want our team to have a chance. Got 70 kills on the board already, but... It's just not enough. It's proving to not be enough, and I really gotta pull something out if you wanna win this game. Got a sniper there. 
Hey, four or five there. Holy. Okay, that is a strike we're looking for. Definitely getting into that clutch period of the game where you either go hard or lose the match. And I can't understate this. My squad is good here. We got a few really good players in the squad. And we do destroy an objective, but 30 tickets left. We're going to have to really put it on them here. So I can't really take my foot off the pedal at all. Going to start closing the distance with any strafes, making them faster and faster because we have no time to waste. Absolutely no time to waste. Going to start looking at the objective now. Now that my team is in good positioning and we're off the high ground a little bit, with the enemy team at least, going to start hitting the objective as hard as I can. Pre-CMing here, flying as aggressively as I can. That is not good. That is not good. Of course, the one time I pre-ECM when going in for a clutch play uh, goes through. I don't have much time to waste here either. I just have to keep going in and out as quickly as possible. I'm not really giving my ECM much time to recharge. This strafe is not optimal at all, but let's see if we can get at least one kill. Not even, but we did get them really low. Hopefully our teammates can finish it off. Again, just trying to close the distance with these strafes, making them really quick and aggressive. I pretty much get one more strafe here for the end of the game. If I do a really good job on this strafe, we might win it. Objectives armed. They defused it. Okay. We had a friendly on the objective there and it still got defused. I got a three piece and it still just wasn't enough. Gonna try to close it in with this strafe here, but that is gonna be the end of the game. There's nothing we can do. Unfortunate loss there, but we're going to switch it over to the defense side here. Seems to be really strong. Let's see how we go. All right, so we're back here on the defense. My hunch here is that the defensive side is the extremely advantaged side on this map. So let's see how it goes. This time we're in the Q5 Fantan. It's my favorite attach yet. In my opinion, it's the best one in the game. And we got the same loadout pretty much. Just running the, the stealth coding ECM again this time. We found out the ECM was the way to go. And the Hydra Rockets. Maybe whiffing that first strafe, to be honest. Could have got two there, but let's get the jet out of the sky. That's why I'm one counter. Only counter on the map. Shoot it down real quick. And now it's pretty much open range here. Now it's time for us to try and crunch down on as many infantry as we can. But again, I have a feeling this map is just super defender sided. My squad, I can't state this enough, was very, very strong. We had total vehicle control the whole time and we still couldn't win and usually in battlefield 4 if the map has vehicles the team with the good vehicle control usually ends up winning sorry infantry players but it is the way it usually goes getting a nice headshot down that strafe there and because the missile is already detonated i can come in and kill another guy here so let's do that and then pop down behind the sand dune and we can see now that the enemy is actually we've got the a flag flashing which means they're actually capping it and they just did so now we have one objective left and this is actually really good for me because in the attack jet you someone said this actually but you're kind of playing god on a lot of these maps when you get to the certain level you can almost choose when the enemy team does progress so now that i have one objective left i can pretty much watch the ticket count and try and let them push as soon as it's getting too close and just extend the farm for as long as possible uh, you can dislike the video if you really hate that kind of strategy but Look, I, I'm a cruel person. I want to farm these guys as long as possible. So it really gives me a lot of control as soon as they cap that one objective there. And that is exactly what we want. So flying in pretty low on the, uh, the exits. Exactly how we want to do it to dodge the stingers. We got ECM and this should be really, really easy. But more or less what I'm saying is if I want them to cap less, I kill the tanks. If I want them to cap more, I just kind of fly away for a little bit. Maybe do a bit of dogfighting and just try to kill snipers so towards the end of this objective i will try to oh, holy sh let's just talk about that for a second how did i not die i guess if you come in at the right angle it never really kills you which is nice so pretty unfortunate we had something go through our ecm and didn't die got too greedy just trying to get those three or four piece strafes there but it's not really worth it maybe a two piece would be more safe so let's just try to find one and two here so first kill second kill there and let's pull away it's gonna take it a little bit easier i don't want to have any more close calls like that but yeah going back to what i was saying if i want them to push i will still kill people but i'll kill the snipers and that actually helps the enemy team because it's more likely that if you kill them in a bad position they might spawn on a squad mate in a good position so that's what i will end up doing here as soon as it gets a bit closer but for now we have 80 more tickets to play with got a lot more kills we can pick up and it actually helps them right now that I'm dogfighting the jet and wasting my time doing this. So 
I mean, I say wasting my time. It's not really a waste of time, but uh, I could be getting more kills on the ground right now. Anyways, run out of ammo there. It is the issue with the stealth coding where you don't really have too much to play with. I'm trying to find one on the exit here. I don't see anyone. And a little tip, sometimes you want to go in first person just to get really close to the sand dunes or just get really close to the cover and make it a really clean exit. Anyways, they got that next, next objective armed. I don't really want them to cap it just yet, but I also don't mind if they do cap it. It's not like Breakthrough in Battlefield 5 where the tickets carry over. Um, if they cap it, they get a full fresh set of tickets. So it is actually good that we defuse it there. And I'm going to go a little bit harder on the enemy here just for a bit more. I, I don't want them to cap yet. Very good sign though that they are showing that they're capable of capping the objective. I'm really impressed because this is a terrible map. It's a very, very hard map to capture on and they're actually getting it done. So pretty surprised, especially given the teammates I'm playing with here. Anyways, getting my Hydras pretty much reloaded again. I'm not running Belt Feeder, so you do reload them a little bit less. You will run out of Hydras sometimes, so just taking that break with the ECM is quite nice sometimes. I have had games recently where I'm running the, the Flares and the Stealth Coating and the Hydras, and you actually run out of Rockets. It's so rare, but it actually does happen, so... That guy had Spawn Protection, you can definitely tell, and I only get one. Luckily, no Stingers though, so I'm allowed to come back in straight away. And they are capping the MCOM, and I don't really mind if they cap it here. I mean, they can if they want. I would rather them not cap it, but if they do, I'm not going to be mad. I mean, 60 tickets left, but if we keep killing them, they might get demoralized. So there you go, they actually capped the first sector. I don't think every other time I've tried the Fantan on this map, they never get past the first sector, so... That's really, really good. Uh, this is pretty much the first for me going past this point. Let's see if we can make it a good game. I'm not sure if I should kill that tank. I think my friendly tanks are good. The only time I'm going to kill the tanks is if they really endanger my friendlies. That's when I will do it. Come back, relax. And we got 29 and 0 so far, so we're, we're on good pace here. We're doing pretty well. Going to be killing the quad bike or the... Sorry, the motorbike and it's one of those maps where the infantry are so far away from my teammates that the kill feed is pretty much all me sometimes and that's really good it's really efficient but a canister shell will end us there it's a 30 kill streak or something and the canister will get us unfortunate but we'll get right back into it all right so here's the next jet and the enemy have pushed up the new sectors have been established and they're already putting arms on the objectives which is pretty crazy Already seeing it getting defused at the start there. I see a lot of infantry near this tank. Let's see if we can get them. Again, just really easy with the Hydra rockets. I highly recommend trying it out. A lot of people will just go straight for the JDAMs, but the Hydras are a bit of a hidden gem. They're really strong, and especially... I know all of the console guys love Hydras. Almost all the console guys that I know that have came over have been like, oh, you should try the Hydras out, and I finally did. They're crazy. They're really, really good. I don't know why I imitate the console guys there. It's not like they did anything wrong. <laughs> Anyways, looking towards that tank, he has a couple reppers on him. I'm going to try to come back around and kill the guys repairing the tank. I don't really want them to cap just yet. 80 tickets are still very comfortable. And I could try to stay in and get a few more kills on the other reppers on the next tank, but after dying to that canister shell, I want to take it easy. I want to be really safe here. Especially because I got missile. I'm better off just to wait, get some altitude again. With the A-10, I was flying really low and aggressive, but against this team, they're locking a little bit less, and I have ECM. So, in my opinion, the playstyle with flares is low and aggressive, and the playstyle with ECM is kind of more high, because you're going to pre-ECM 90% of the time anyway. Usually, you don't even let them shoot the missile. So, like, right there, for example, I ECM before they even shoot it, because I don't want to risk it. Somehow, he still shoots it, and it does get dodged anyway, so that's nice. I am fearing that my team is now too strong though because we do not see many enemies on the objectives, the tanks are nowhere to be seen, and we're pretty much just killing infantry at this point. Now, fortunately I went in way too early there, that's a lesson that you just gotta, you just gotta learn and you gotta pay attention when you're jetting. Even if it is easy, you gotta pay attention to the fundamentals. If you look on the, the cockpit screen, you'll see a little timer that shows when the ECM is back up. About three to four seconds is when you should turn back and start striving again. 
any earlier than that and you might do what I just did there and waste an ECM and get hit. Pretty much just sold myself out of getting maybe three or four more kills just by doing that one little mistake and it's by watching your gameplay and watching you know players who are pretty smart at the game that you'll figure out where you go wrong and where you can improve so it's a really good way to learn I remember I used to watch so many different jet pilots just trying to learn the, the art that is jetting of course it's not much of an art on this map I'm not gonna lie it's pretty easy it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it and definitely let me know if you guys want to see more rush gameplay on the channel I do enjoy it it is pretty fun but it's broken man I, I really hope that 2042 gets it right because Rush is not well balanced on Battlefield 4. They just... I don't even know. Is it a lack of playtesting? Is it a lack of experience playtesting? Is it just a Rush game load where they didn't playtest play it at all? I feel yeah, like it comes like down to something like that because... I mean, bomb. Dice, hit me up, get me on 2042. I'll abuse everything I can. I'll try to find the problems with the game because... Oh, wait. I would have spotted this out pretty quickly, I guarantee it. It's well, very, 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 very obvious it. for anyone who has played a lot of Battlefield. I mean, for this map specifically, what the enemy really does need is a transport heli. Um, that would be really, really helpful because the attacker does struggle against the <laughs> transport helis. It doesn't kill them very fast, so that won't get countered by jets. You can almost guarantee the transport heli on this map, you could sneak it around the dunes, start a back cap, start flanking, stuff like that. They also got to try to make the map a little bit wider on the outside so it opens up more flanking routes for the attackers and more transports maybe some mrap stuff like that that would really really even the map out or put an aa on it if they put an aa on it that'll literally make it so the jet has to run jdams and at that point uh it'll be much less effective against infantry so those are my kind of ideas on how they could have fixed this map but honestly silk road's overrated it's an overrated map um it is my road, of course. It is named after me, but it's an overrated map. I don't like it too much. Especially on Conquest as well. It just becomes like dodgeball to fly on or even dodgeball to tank on. You're just constantly avoiding locks, shells, toes, everything. Absolutely crazy. Anyways, enough negativeness. Don't know if people like that on my channel, but I just felt like I had to give my two cents. Again, dice, hit me up, please. Let me test things. Uh, and getting onto the game, we are on our last 18 tickets, really dominating the enemy here, and we're going to start to close it out. I think you can just tell because their tanks are not really moving much, and they're not really making any attempt to actually really get into the map. If you're playing a tank on this, you want to try to take the high ground, I think, and start to shoot down from the hill, and then work your way into the objective from a flank. That kind of thing would help a lot, but their tanks are just coming in straight, pretty much giving free shots to all our engineers and tanks, and... The game will end pretty quickly. I do see the attack jet is up now, but 11 tickets left. And this is the beauty of not having a stealth jet. If this guy ever gets me down to like 50 health, I can instantly start to put the defense on him. But I'm not even stressed having a jet right behind me because it's an attack jet. And in Battlefield 4, the dogfighting skill gap is so massive that you can pretty much just play with the jets at this point. Anyway, he's going to look for the last few kills of the match. There's one guy there with his stinger, sniper on the hill, try to get the last with the cannons, only hit marker him and don't actually kill him. And that's going to be it, just going to turn back towards his attack jet and fly out the rest of the game. Definitely no more kills I'm going to get, I'll try to get some more, but this attack jet is pretty hot on me. And yeah, that's it, I hope you guys really enjoyed the gameplay. Do let me know what you want to see on the channel because I'm kind of just running out of ideas at this point on Battlefield 4, but if there's something you guys all really want to see, just let me know and I'll make the video for it. Anyways, all that said, do remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will catch you guys all on the next one. Peace. That was a good game.